We are on the 15th, which is exciting because the 15th through the 18th, Stampin' Up! is doing a seasonal sale. 10 to 20% off so many things, you guys. So many things. I'm going to read you the list real quick um, after I pull it up here on my old lapper top. Um, so this creative inspiration calendar is 30 days of creating. You can get this totally free from me when you subscribe to my emails. So there is a link below the video that says get my emails. You click that link, you'll be subscribed and you'll be able to get this every single month. Make sure that you follow up with the subscription by going into your email, check your junk and spam folder and confirm the email. That's actually a federal regulation. I have to have you confirm your subscription. That's just so that people can't add you to random email lists, even though it happens all the time. Not this girl. This girl is a rule follower. So I will not be adding anybody to an email list unless they give me permission and do all the things. So um, sign up, then check your email, confirm your subscription, and you'll start getting these. I email them out on the 28th of every month. Unless, of course, you know, life happens. And then sometimes it could be the 29th or the 30th. But generally speaking, it's the 28th. I try to stay pretty darn consistent with that. Okay, so the seasonal sale from Stampin' Up! is, why can't I find it? On my, posted by me. Okay, it's as if I never posted it. I don't, that is so bizarro. All right, um, well, I sent out an email. <laughs> so you get, here's what you get. There is 10% off of all punches, 15% off of stamp sets. Those are not including the host stamp sets and 20% off of dies, embossing folders, and designer series paper from the annual catalog. So I will pop all of that information into the chat here in a little bit. Okay, Fitting Florets is still available as a collection. I just wanted to remind you about that. And then the offer I have going on is you get six by six designer series paper and the Caroling Mice stamp set free from me when you place a $50 online order or more. Now, if you go to my website and you've been reading, this was 50, place a $50 order, you get the paper, place a $100 order, you get the stamp set. For three days only, today through the 18th, so while Stampin' Up's doing their seasonal sale, if you order with me $50 or more, you're gonna get both. So I'm just upping that uh, sale by a little bit and doing this as an extra thing. So if you want to get these goodies for free, place a $50 order and I will put them in the mail to you, okay? So let's pull up comments and such. And I'll remind you guys about this. We're gonna use this gorgeous paper today, as a matter of fact, on our cards. We have two cards to make today. They're the same measurements and all the things, but there are two different cards. All right. Now, as if you're new, I don't chit chat while I am creating because it's too hard for me. I'm just not good at it. So forgive me ahead if you're commenting and I'm not responding. I will do that at the end of the video. We are going to make this card first. Is this not the cutest or what? This is a gift card holder. And you don't need to write measurements down because per usual, I have created a free project sheet for you. And you'll be able to get that free project sheet in a couple of hours off of my blog. I haven't finished it up yet, so don't go there right now. Just hang out with us and then you'll be able to get it here in a little while. All right, so we're starting out. I've got all my pieces and parts cut and ready to go. We're starting out with a piece of five and a half by four and a quarter Poppy Parade cardstock. 
And then I've got a piece of that Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper, which is so beautiful and versatile. And it, it is cut at five and a quarter by four. And we're just going to layer this right here like so. And then we've got a piece of four and a quarter by nine inch Poppy Parade. And we're just gonna score this at three and six. Real simple. And then we're going to fold, fold it over this way. Let's use our bone folder here. And then we're gonna fold it back this way. And then we're going to go ahead and attach it. And I'm using Stamp and Seal Plus. This is my favorite adhesive that Stampin' Up sell, sells. So then I'm just going to add this in the center. You know, if you wanna make sure your stuff is really straight, get yourself one of these T-square rulers because then you can line it up on your cardstock, like so. And attach it down, whoops, like so. And then you've got it on there nice and straight. Okay, so now we're gonna do our other layers. This piece is cut at two and seven eighths by three. And I'm going to use an old circle punch from Stampin' Up that I have hanging around. Doesn't really matter what size. This one is one and three eighths, but you, you could use one inch, two inch. It doesn't really matter. Long as it's not wider than the cardstock. And then we're going to use our multi-purpose glue. I love this glue. This is probably my second favorite adhesive ever, and you can get this other places besides Stampin' Up. It's not exclusive to Stampin' Up, but Stampin' Up does sell it. Uh, apologize for my dog barking there. She's outside, but she's yapping. Okay, so add that. And now we're gonna do some stamping. Oh, actually, first let's add our piece of black. So this is two and three quarters by four. And we're just gonna add this into the front center. And now we're gonna do our stamping and some fun little tips and tricks. So I have my Stamparatus all set up and I am going to use it to do some stamping. So this is the piece that's gonna go on the front of my card. And I wanna make sure, yep, that's good. We're gonna use Poppy Parade ink. Stamp that down there. And then we're going to flip this over. And I'm gonna move it out a little so it's not quite as far up. And then we're gonna ink this up again. Stamp that corner. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp our larger piece since I already have this out. Just makes it easier. This is gonna go inside the card. And then here, we'll just do our little corner. Okay. And then this is the fun trick. We're gonna ink up our stamp. Now I used the, whoops, wrong one. Where'd it go? Where's my other punch? Seriously? Hello? What is happening right now? What is actually happening right now? Where's my punch? For Pete's sake. Oh, I see it. It's across the room. Okay, so we're using the Scotty Dog Punch. I should have shown you this too. And the Christmas Scotty Stamp Set. Good grief. What am I even doing? What kind of demonstrator am I? Substandard. 
So we're using this bundle, super, super, super cute. This is one of my very favorites in the holiday catalog. I still call it the holiday catalog. Technically that's not what it's called, but whatever. So I'm inking up my little gingham, whatever this is, plaid, and I've already punched and poppy parade my little Scotty dog bow. And I'm just gonna lay it here cause I know this is where it stamps. And I'm gonna stamp right down on top like that. And then we'll peel this off and now look. Can you see that it's all cutesy pootsy? So dang cute. And it's just a little small added touch, but sometimes those little small added touches make a big difference. Okay, so this is going on the front and I wanna stamp my sentiment on this first. This is the Merry Christmas sentiment from the Scotty Dog um, set. And I'm just going to stamp it right here. And then we're going to go ahead and add our dog with a couple of dimensionals. And then I'm gonna glue this on. You could either put this on dimensionals. I think on the other card I put it on dimensionals, but gluing it flat is fine too. So we'll do that. I just love black, white, and red together. I think it screams Christmas. Um, it's so classic and just beautiful. So anyway, it makes me happy and that's why I use black, white, and red a lot Christmas time. Okay, there's that. And then we're gonna add a little eyeball for our Scotty because I feel like that is really what just finishes the front of this card off. And I'm just adding his eye right below his little eyebrow up here. And then we will add this piece to the inside and you're done. How easy is that? You could mass produce these so super fast. And I always need lots and lots and lots of cards like this for Christmas gift card holders. So we're going to grab the festive pearls, I think is what these are called. And I'm going to add just a little thing to the center of his bow and he's done. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this one as well cause I didn't do that yet. And I mean, he definitely needs it. It's so cute. There we go. So that is so cute. All done. Very cute, very easy. Now we're gonna make another one and it's totally different, but also the same. So I'll put this one up here like so. And I've been getting some questions about the host code, by the way, while we're talking. Um, I've been getting questions about the host code for getting these free goodies from me. So when you place a $50 order today, November 15th, 2022 through November 18th, 2022, you get these free from me, both of them, just for those few days. And that is when you also use this host code. So the host code will be linked below after this video is over. I'll make sure to add it down there. And um, actually it's already there. I just looked, it's already there. So this is the host code that you need to use when you place your $50 online order or more and you'll get both of these for free, okay? And that's only through the 18th. All right, so, and the questions I've been getting has been through email, by the way. I'm not crazy and thinking you're sending messages that you're not sending here. All right, so here's the other card we're gonna make. Isn't this adorable? So this one is super fun and I have a fun trick to show you on this card as well. We are using the Songbird stamp set and punch. So super cute. And we're using that celebrate everything. Hold on, let me, let me make a little bit in here. We're using that celebrate everything designer series paper that I just showed you. That's that free paper. So this designer paper here 
and the designer paper for this card are from that same paper pack. They're from this paper pack. Okay. So you'll get, you'll get these papers. All right. So we're going to do all the exact same things as we did with the first card. I'm going to put this together super fast. So we've got our, so you're going to see like, if you were making this, you wanting to mass produce this card and make a bunch of them for whatever, they're really easy to mass produce. Once you have everything cut, the cutting all the pieces is the most time consuming part. So we're scoring it three and six. This piece of cardstock is, we used Poppy Parade again, and it's cut at nine by four and a quarter, okay? And then we're just gonna fold over and back. So we're making like a, a Z fold, kind of, sort of. And then we're gonna use our bone folder both ways. Yep, yep, yep. More adhesive. Really don't want this to fall off, so I'm using lots of adhesive. And I'm using my grid mat to line this up. People ask all the time, where'd you get the grid mat? Amazon. You can get these mats on Amazon. Um, depends on which ones you get, how much they cost. So, you know. Then we've got a piece of Pacific Point cardstock. This is cut at the two and three quarters by four going on the front. And this is just to show you how versatile, like, everything is, right? You can make things, is this, yeah. So this is three by two and seven eighths. I just needed to make sure I found the right side for the top. Three inches by two and seven eighths. And I use glue here because I don't want, um, the stamp and seal would be too thick and it would close in too much. And if, it, if that happens, because you obviously you want to leave the top of this with no glue so your gift card can fit in there. So I'm just gonna glue that down. Now your gift card can go right in there. I don't even think I said that on the last one. Okay, so there's our base, right? So now we're gonna do the stamping, which is the most fun. So this, this is the inside. This is the front piece. And we're gonna bring in, we don't need that yet. We're gonna start, yes we do. We're gonna start with stamping our sentiment. So I have a little bird told me, and we're gonna stamp it right here. Why are we starting with the sentiment? Because we want the placement of the sentiment to be correct before we move to anything else. So now we can stamp our other pieces. So this is my little, um, you know what? Let me get a piece of grid paper. This grid paper from Stampin' Up! is my very favorite. It is, I think it's eight by eight. Am I right? Yeah, seven by seven, a little bit bigger than seven. And it is intended to use inside the stamp apparatus. However, I use it all the time for all the things. So I highly recommend purchasing one of these packs of grid paper. Super handy for your crafting needs. So we're gonna stamp two of these going in opposite directions. And we'll close, and you know what? While we've got it out, I lied. We're gonna also do this because I didn't do this on the other card and then I regretted it. We're gonna stamp where the inside goes to. Okay. Now we can close the soft suede. We use soft suede for that. Then we're gonna grab granny apple green and we're going to ink up and stamp here. We'll set this aside. This sweet songbird stamp set in punch is so cute. It's in the annual catalog and you could just get the punch if you wanted to, if you didn't want to get the, um, we're gonna add a few more leaves. Let's just go right up here like so and like so. Let's turn this. So you could get just the punch and make little birdies with just the punch. And you're going to say, what did I say earlier? 
Ten percent, I think, is on, off of all the punches. Let me double check. Yeah, ten percent on punches in the annual catalog. So that's an option. And then we're gonna do our birdie stamping. Now here's where the tricks come in. This is fun. So we've got our stamparatus here and you can see I've already got my little bird and his wing on here, but how, what is the deal? Let me tell you, if I stamp this right now on a piece of cardstock, I'm gonna be able to line it up perfectly with the punch and punch it out. And here's how you do that. You take your punch and you punch, okay? You punch it out. So nothing's been stamped, nothing's been punched. You take your punch and you, where you've punched it, and you lay it down, and then you take your stamps and you position them very carefully over the top, okay? This is going the opposite direction. Boop, there we go. Okay, so then you lay it all down and you get your pieces lined up inside here. Now, after you do that, you close your lid, you pick up your stamps on the stamp apparatus. They're exactly where they need to be. You remove this. You can pop in your cardstock. And we're gonna use our Pacific Point to ink up our little bluebird of happiness. That's where I was going with, with the color of this birdie. We're gonna ink him up one more time so he's nice and solid and dark. Okay, and now when we go to punch him out, he's lined up perfectly. I just have to wiggle him into the right spot, which takes a second. And now I've been able to do that. So you could stamp as many of these as you wanted to and punch them all out with no problem and they're all gonna be lined up perfectly. Isn't that fun? So fun, so easy. One of my very favorite tricks. So we've got our little beak here for our bird that punched out, but it wasn't stamped. So I'm gonna take a So Saffron Stamp and Blend marker and I'm just gonna color right over this. You could take the time to go grab a piece of cardstock and punch it separate, but I just don't really see that being necessary. So that's how I choose to do it. And then we're gonna use our glue. Whoops, kind of got, kind of got carried away there. And add his little beak. If you didn't want to do that, you could even color just where the little beak area was white. You could just color that in. And then we're going to add our little wing right on top. Did you guys forget about this? Those of you who are regular Stampin' Up! people um, that, that purchase from the catalogs, did you guys forget about this little cute little set? You know, one of the things that I want to try to be intentional about this coming year uh, is using more of my products regularly instead of, I just got a couple of googly eyes out here. Um, instead of just only making like Christmas cards or whatever is in the current catalog. Cause then I feel like we miss out. Okay. That's two different eyeballs. It's okay. We've got, that's all right. We're all unique. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. This bird was wonderfully and fearfully made with two different eyeballs and that's okay. We will accept him as he is. So we're gonna let him dry a little cause those, I don't want those eyes to fall off. And while we're doing that, we need to stamp the sentiment on the inside piece. So this says, you've got something to celebrate. So on the front, it says, a little bird told me. And then on the inside, it says, you've got something to celebrate. Now, the great thing about these sentiments, this particular sentiment, is you could use this for anything, right? You could use it for a graduation. You could use it for a birthday. You could use it for, hey, you got a new job. You could, whatever, whatever your suits your fancy. Um, 
you could totally use this for that. You know what, before we add him, I'm gonna add this piece because I don't wanna have to turn this piece over and glue it with my little googly eyes. Damp, that would be bad. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna perch him up right here on this little branch. He's looking so dapper and adorable. And then we're gonna add this piece right inside. And we are done. And you know what I have now? Because I'm sharing with you, now I've got two Christmas gift card holders that couldn't be any cuter and two birthday gift card holders that couldn't be any cuter. Isn't that fun? So fun. All from that same designer series paper pack. And you could make anything like you could look at this for Christmas. Super cute. You could do this could be for springtime. We've got those trees. He could do checks. I mean, really, there's just the sky's the limit. We've got fall foliage. The foliage. If you like Jim Gaffigan, you might know that little bit there. Okay, so once again, I'm going to bring back in my inspiration calendar because I want you to be able to see that host code there. If you want to get both of these free from me, place a $50 online order that's before tax and shipping. So it's $50 in product and use this host code and I will send you both of these for free from me. That's just till November 18th, 2022. Okay, friends, we are gonna go to the Q&A portion of this video. So if you're here and you're new, this is where we just hang out as friends and we chit chat and you're welcome to hang out with us. If that's not your jam, that's okay. Check back here in about an hour or check back on my website in about an hour and you will see the free project sheet tutorial for these. Um, I'll get those up ASAP. All right. So I see I've got Jean from Phoenix. Hello in Antelope Valley, Texas. I own. That's not very far from me. Uh, Michigan, North Dakota, Missouri. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much. Texas, New York, Pennsylvania, Central Illinois, When I had to dress for work, black and red was my favorite color combo. Oh, I love it. I was asking, I'm in Oregon. Okay, we've got people in Oregon. Thank you, Virginia says, very classy card. Edith says, this is so cute. Have you tried for the artisan team? You have such a great eye for beautiful cards. You know, honestly, Edith, um, I... So let me tell you what Edith is referring to. Edith is talking about Stampin' Up! has this design team. It's called the Artisan Design Team. And they make really beautiful, elaborate cards. And it is a big deal to be picked and be part of this design team. I applied for it years ago. I wasn't chosen. And honestly, I don't have time for it. People who are on the Artisan Design Team, generally speaking... I think it, it consumes an enormous amount of time and energy, and I don't think I would be able to run my business uh, the way I run it if I did that. So it's kind of a choice thing, first. Second, I honestly don't think that I would get picked because even though my stuff coordinates well and I love my cards, they're not as fancy as the artisans. So I hope that explains that. Snowy in Pennsylvania. Hey, Denise. Lori's in Massachusetts. Hi, Ramona, Rebecca, Janice. Miss Deborah's in the house. Pam. These could be used for cash gifts also. Oh, absolutely. You could fold up some cash and stick it in these pockets as well. A hundred percent. 
Oh, look at, I have this little thing. This was given to me by a friend. I could put this in here, you know, you could, there's, uh, there's probably other little things that you could find to stick in. Oh, awesome. Kathy said she's working on cash and gift card holders today, so she's going to make one of these. Jean, yes, you did place your order. Thank you so much. I got it. Hello in Ontario, Canada. Hi, Mary. Miss Virginia Peak is in the house. Love these gift card ideas and the papers are wonderful. Hello in sunny Southern California. Sunny here today too, but it's cold. Hi, Iona. Okay, so yeah, Jean says they need to have all levels of artisans. I think the whole concept with artisan though, Jean, is that it is super fancy. And I kind of like that to be totally honest with you like you know if it wasn't that way then it's just like everybody else's stuff so I kind of love the way they do the artisan thing it's very cool and it's very prestigious to be a part of it so anyway okay so what are your favorite fun fold Wendy especially for the holidays honestly Janice any fun fold that is a gift card holder or that could be turned into a gift card holder is my favorite because um they I always need those they I honestly need them all year long especially now the kids in my family are all not just my own personal child but my nieces and stuff they're all either teens or preteens they don't want a gift from me but I could make them a card they want money or they want gift cards. So I can make them a card and add a little gift card. Um, I have my stamp camp that I just recorded uh, my one of my last videos for yesterday, which by the way, you can still buy um, the virtual access to that stamp camp for $35. So if you wanna get virtual access to my stamp camp, which is coming out this week, um, it, you, you can only purchase it, but I, I talk about gift card holders and I make one in that, class that's really cool so there's eight projects total pdfs for both videos for everything you will not be disappointed so i'll pop the link to that stamp camp uh virtual access in the link below this video um or in the description below this video so and i will thank you so much virginia oh it's snowing in wisconsin kathy says Oh, great idea, Marsha. Marsha says lottery tickets. You could totally put lottery tickets in these. The small ones, not the big giant ones. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in. I don't really see any more questions coming through. Um, thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me while we made a couple of cards together today. over to my computer and I am going to start putting all oh stamp camp is this weekend um there's no live event you're just going to get an email Kathy so and your stuff is going to get shipped tomorrow or maybe Thursday okay so yeah so everything will be ready for you in about an hour and you can get this free project sheet okay thanks so much for hanging out with me and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day Bye bye